Okay, what causes the diastolic blood pressure to be high? When you take your blood pressure, the classical television that everybody knows is 120 over 80. Now, the top number is called the systolic blood pressure, the di which is the blood pressure that's created as your heart pumps. The bottom number is called the di diastolic blood pressure, and that is the pressure of the resting tone of the arteries in your body and how much pressure is on them routinely. So that can go up if you're fluid overloaded, if you're taking too much salt, you can get it as your uh arteries start to harden with aging and your cholesterol plaquing that can make the diastolic pressure go up uh, by itself uniquely you can have a normal systolic and elevated diastolic uh, but most of the time you're going to have both of them elevated so a, a normal blood pressure 140 or less over 90 or less an ideal blood pressure 120 over 80 but normal 140 or less over 90 or less so if you can get that and it may take depending upon where you're starting from the, the decision to make is not whether to start a medication or not. Once you start a medication, it doesn't matter what the dose is. I have patients ask me all the time, well, can I start on a low dose of something? Well, no, what you want to start on is an effective dose of something. The decision is to take the medicine or not to take the medicine. Once you decide to take it, you need to take a dose that's going to work for you and keep your blood pressure controlled at all times, not that it's controlled most of the time. People will bring me blood pressure logs that have some good blood pressures on them and some bad blood pressures on them. And they will always want to explain away the bad blood pressures and, and, and accept the good blood pressures that, oh, see how good my blood pressure is. But I say, well, what about this one? And what about this one? That is, it, was, it was elevated and it was too high. Oh, well, that I was doing so and so. I had just ate something or I just somebody cut me off in traffic or whatever. The point being, you do not want your blood pressure to go up under stress because that's when you have a heart attack or a stroke. So it's important to keep your blood pressure controlled at all times. That may take one medicine. For most people, it takes at least three medications. Some people are on five medications, but it's whatever it takes to control your blood pressure. So don't be impressed by the number of pills. Uh, be impressed by whether your blood pressure is controlled or not. But again, the decision, once you and your healthcare provider decide it's time to go on blood pressure medications, and it's not a hard decision to make because you're not going to be able to diet and exercise away your blood pressure. You're not going to be able to noni juice. Uh, or you're not going to be able to apple cider vinegar. You're not going to be able to take garlic juice and all these things that are good and natural. Lord, they will lower your blood pressure three points, five points. Most of us need to lower our blood pressure 30 points or 40 points. So it's not going to get you where you need to be. And being a little bit better, is doesn't give you any significant benefit there used to be five stages of hypertension uh, now there are only two and the reason there are only two is because once you get to stage two hypertension you can't be any worse it doesn't matter how much higher your blood pressure go you're not at any uh, increased risk for a heart attack or a stroke you just either you're going to be at risk or not so you want to make sure that you are controlled again so you ideally want your blood pressure to be less than 140 millimeters of mercury is the unit of measure over 90 millimeters of mercury anything less than that you know you get to 130 over 80 120 over 80 etc those are great numbers but oftentimes unsustainable or unobtainable uh for the average person so that's what we want you to be with that great question